For example, men understand that there's a relationship between how successful they are and how attractive they are to women. Like, and, and part of what they motivates them is the game of that competition. So I worked with high-end lawyers for about 15 years, both men and women, and, and found some very interesting differences in that. But the men even regarded the money they made in bonuses at the end of the year for outstanding performance. They weren't so interested in the money. They were interested in the money as a means of keeping score. It was a means of winning the competition. And you might say, well, competition for what? And the answer to that is, well, let's call it competition, not for status exactly, but for reputation. But the consequence of a stellar reputation is that, and men who have that are much more attractive to women. And you might say, well, women go after wealth, but I think that's nonsense. And I think that's also belied by the relevant evolutionary biology theory, because what it shows, and tell me if I've got this wrong, is that women use wealth as a marker for attractiveness because they use wealth as a marker for competence. Mm -hmm. And what they're after is the ability to generate wealth mm -hmm. to, and, 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 to, and to share it and to be generous with it. It has to be both productivity and generosity. And a decent marker for the capacity to generate wealth is wealth, although right. it's not the only criteria. So women are looking for competence and men, it's a very strange thing about men, you know, they compete among themselves for competence-based reputation. And now, I've been trying to figure out why, because you can imagine a, a, like a, a movie scenario where, um, you know, the quarterback of the football team wins a major championship and all the other men put him on his shoulders and, you know, bring him out of the stadium and he sleeps with the cheerleader that night. And you might ask yourself, well, why in the world would the men group together to elevate a given man to that sort of status if it means that he's going to be the one that successfully reproduces. And my suspicion is that men learned to value competence probably as a consequence of hunting. Yes. So any given hunter, no matter how good he is at hunting, is going to fail in most hunts. So now if men band together to hunt, then the collective success is much larger. And so what that means is that if you're going to be a hunter that provides across hunting bouts, your skill as a hunter is one determinant, but your interpersonal skill in negotiating and establishing relationships with the rest of the hunters is even more important. So among hunter-gatherers, for example, if you're the one who brings down the animal, it's incumbent on you to downplay your contribution and to distribute the best parts of the animal to other people. And you're doing that to foster your reputation as a generous person. And you're doing that in part to ensure that there's reciprocity in food distribution across multiple hunts. Now, the men are going to be willing to elevate the highest hunter to the highest position because I think it's in their collective interest. It's in their collective interest and in their individual interest to be the followers of the best man. And I think that's so important in terms of their own reproductive fitness, which would be tied to the provision of food across hunts, that they're willing to take the reproductive hit that's, what would you say, implicit in elevating any given man among all other men. You could think about that in, in terms of hunting and you could think about that in terms of combat too. You know, if you put the most heroic warrior on your shoulders, you give him an evolutionary edge. But if you're in his group, well, then you've got the benefits of being with the greatest warrior and the greatest hunter. And so I don't know if the evolutionary biologists have been able to calculate out the relationship between establishing a reciprocal relationship with a great hunter or a great warrior versus the costs of men competing to elevate a given man to the highest possible position. It's a very weird thing that men do. No, I think that I think you're I think you hit the nail on the head though. I mean, I think that the benefits of aligning yourself with somebody who's very powerful yeah, yeah. that I mean, think about it. If there's somebody and like let's say that he's, you know, 1.0 and you're sort of 1.1 1 .1, um and so there's somebody who's who's a better performer than yeah. you, 
you could get your ass kicked if you keep trying to have to, you know, fight with this guy. So there's a big cost to you to trying to to overturn this person. And there's right. a lot of benefits of aligning with the person yeah. who's also really competent. Mm-hmm. And so it's especially think, true if it's a Pareto distribution in terms of competence, right? Because well, yeah. the really competent person might be like a hundred times more competent. Well, right, exactly. And so it's like I think that there's there's a lot of benefits that come, especially to men, because of the hunting context. Yeah of aligning with a, another man in that context. 